here in Como in Italy and it's a lovely sunny day as you can see and I'm thinking about the three mistakes that your brain makes that create and maintain anxiety for you. So the first mistake is that your brain mistakenly gives you the experience of fear but there is no threat. This <laughs> Incoming. Okay. The first mistake that your brain makes is this. It makes you believe, makes you feel, it makes you experience fear, which is the emotion behind anxiety, without a threat. So my definition of anxiety is always this. It's the experience of fear without a threat. Your brain tricks you into feeling frightened. It makes the mistake of giving you the experience of fear, but without a threat. Now, that's the most fundamental mistake that your brain can make, because everything else that you do after that, everything that you do as a consequence of that anxiety is a mistake also. But fear, without a threat, gives you the physiology that you need to survive, but it doesn't give you the, 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 the focus, the target that you need to focus your attention on so that you can survive. I'm here on the, the monument of Alessandra Volta in Como in Italy and Alessandra Volta was a scientist he invented the voltaic cell which is in a sense the first battery and I, and I rather think he discovered methane so the scientific or the experimental method requires us to test something to see if it's actually true if it's valid okay your brain makes the mistake of giving you the experience of fear the emotion of fear but there's no actual threat in external reality. Now, this first mistake cascades and creates other mistakes. The next mistake is that because you feel fear and you assume that that fear is valid, you avoid the thing that makes you frightened. Now, avoidance is a very uh, understandable and very natural strategy. You definitely should avoid things that are frightening, right? Well, let's say avoid things that are dangerous. But suppose your brain makes the first mistake, it gives you the experience of fear without a threat, and then you assume that something that is safe is causing your, your threat level to go sky high, and therefore you avoid it. So, you know, you avoid a supermarket because you might feel fear in the supermarket. Well, that second mistake perpetuates the first, because now the second mistake is that you're avoiding stuff that you don't need to avoid. And when we avoid stuff that we don't need to avoid, we never learn that that stuff is safe. We tend to assume that we have to keep avoiding it, which is why anxiety carries on and, in a sense, is perpetuated. The third mistake that your brain makes, that makes anxiety and also perpetuates anxiety, is this. Because your brain has made the first mistake, which is making you feel the emotion of fear without a threat, and the second mistake is that you avoid stuff which you don't need to avoid because there's naturally no threat. The third mistake is your body gives you the physiology of fear. So because the supermarket feels threatening and you avoid going to it, you feel a little bit more in control, a little bit calmer. So you believe that the physiology of fear is appropriate and almost validates 
the other two mistakes. There's a seaplane that comes in, lands, takes people around, comes in, lands, takes people around, comes in, lands. All day long the pilots landing on the, la on the, uh, the lake and taking more people off. When we put these three mistakes together, what we end up with is a catalogue of, of mistakes, of errors, that give you the total experience of anxiety. Unless you recognise that these mistakes are happening, it's very difficult to see how you change it. So typically what people do is you medicate or you avoid stuff or you just learn to suffer and live with the problem. But when you challenge these mistakes, you'd be surprised to find that actually anxiety is something which is quite open to change and your brain is quite prepared to learn if you tell it what to learn and if you tell it how to learn in an appropriate way. So thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. I hope you found this interesting. Here I am in Lake Como in Italy and uh, it's a gorgeous day in March.